with coverage you can count on. Witnesses didn't want their faces on camera. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11 in HD. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Glover. And I'm Cindy Sexton. Traffic is moving smoothly on I-75 right now, but that certainly wasn't the case earlier today. A crash shut down the interstate for hours. It involved two cars and an RV. The RV overturned at exit two near the I-24 split, and that caused a backup for miles. New at 11, Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Kate Smith has more from people who were near the scene when that crash occurred. Witnesses didn't want their faces on camera, but they say from what they saw, it is a miracle no one was killed in today's accident. Golfers at Brown Acres Golf Course got quite the surprise during their game. They expected an afternoon of relaxation, but felt anxious as they watched the scene unfold. As I was getting ready to make the turn, I uh, noticed a lot of police activity over on 75 northbound. And when I come over here, I saw what had happened. He couldn't believe his eyes. An RV pulling a Jeep and a car crashed down an embankment with the Jeep landing on top of the car and trapping the woman inside. Chattanooga firefighters, police and county EMS all responded to the scene. Immediately, they were able to get the people out of the RV. 
but getting the woman out of the crushed car involved more effort. They had to secure the vehicles with rescue jacks and cables. Then they were able to get the woman out. They were pretty quick at getting down there and making sure that they were safe and that the lady was going to be safe getting her out. For nearly three hours, crews worked to remove the vehicles, shutting down traffic right before the evening rush. Despite the looks of this horrific crash, Chattanooga police say no one suffered any life-threatening injuries. A major relief for the men who saw it all. It could have been a lot worse. I'm glad that they were able to get her out and get her on a stretcher and get her to the hospital. Chattanooga traffic investigators are still working to determine the cause of the accident. In the studio, Kate Smith, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Dalton police say a man tricked a Zaxby's cashier into giving him almost $100 in stolen cash and police need your help identifying him. Do you recognize this man? Police say he walked into Zaxby's on College Drive last week, placed an order and paid with a $100 bill. He then told the cashier he had exact change and when handed back the C note, he started to argue. The cashier, confused, gave the suspect more money from the register, not realizing the man still had the hundred. The suspect reportedly left with the cash, even dumped his chicken in the trash on the way out. If you recognize who this is, please call Dalton Police. The Walker County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a woman who could be driving around in a big red stolen truck. Deputies are looking for Marquetta Walker. They sh say she may be driving a red 2006 Dodge Ram pickup truck that was reported stolen in Walker County. Deputies say she has used several different last names, including Holland and Harris. If you know where Walker is, you're asked to call the Walker County Sheriff's Office. A burned body was found in the woods last night in South Whitfield County and police are trying to figure out what happened. Police say a 13 year old boy found the body near Ellis Road. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Natalie Potts has the latest on the investigation. It's very quiet. You can sleep to, from 4 to 4 or 8 in the night to 8 the next day or whatever. Dot Norell has lived on Ellis Road for 35 years and says she's never been this shaken up. She saw the blue lights right outside her window, then got the news from her husband. And he told me that it, burnt this, it was a crime scene. And I said, what? Down here? And I, I, I couldn't believe it. Deputies say a 13-year-old boy found a burned body about 30 yards into the woods at the end of this dead-end road. It was around 4.30 in the afternoon on Tuesday, just after school. And they said it really has upset him. I'm glad my husband didn't say it. He would have went all to pieces. It wasn't off into the deep wooded area. It was in an area where if one was walking in the woods, they would come upon it. Deputies believe the man was placed in the woods and set on fire. Investigators aren't sure how the man died or why he was burned. And set him on fire. How could anybody do that? I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, we're totally in the dark right now as far as a who done it. That was Natalie Potts reporting. The body was taken to the GBI's crime lab for an autopsy. Authorities hope to learn more after an official ID is determined and cause of death as well. If you have information that can help investigators, you're asked to call the Whitfield County Sheriff's Office. In Crime Stoppers tonight, Josh Walden will forever be an innocent 10 year old who went for a bike ride on a December Friday in the year 2000. His body was found in the woods above East Lake Park. Two days later, he'd suffocated. Whoever killed Josh, it seems, had tried to cover their tracks by pouring acid over his body. Instead, the chemical preserved the remains and, camp and the fumes kept animals away. Whether he was killed in cold blood or was accidentally uh, murdered. It's not yet been answered, but for the sake of his family, the community who mourned him and the detectives who worked the case, now's the time. Time changes, people, relationships change, uh, people pass away. Um, we don't know how many people that knew about this took it to their grave. We want to talk to anybody that knows anything about the acid, about where that acid could have been used, about what they've heard, even if it's a rumor. 
anything you've heard about this case or what happened to little Josh, please call that in. You can do it without telling anyone who you are and up to a thousand dollars reward is on the line. Call tonight 698-3333. If you get voicemail, leave a way for an officer to get back with you, but he will never ask for your name. The U.S. Justice Department announced criminal and civil actions against Volkswagen in the automaker's emissions cheating scandal. Volkswagen has pleaded guilty to three felonies and will be required to pay billions of dollars in criminal and civil penalties. Attorney General Loretta Lynch said the German automaker conspired to falsely certify vehicles for more than a decade. She also announced the federal indictment of six former high-level executives on multiple charges. Over the course of a conspiracy that lasted for nearly a decade, they seriously abused those positions. And today, they are being charged with a range of crimes, including conspiracy to defraud the United States, violations of the Clean Air Act, and wire fraud. Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam released a statement regarding the settlement, saying in part, Volkswagen is incredibly important to Chattanooga and the state's economy. He said, I have spoken with Volkswagen officials several times over the last couple of days, and they have assured me that this settlement won't restrict in any way their capital expansion plans in Chattanooga. We'll keep you up to date on any new developments in the Volkswagen emission scandal. And now we turn it over to Paul Barris. It's 1107. Just kind of dreary out there, but certainly not winter like, Paul. No, it doesn't feel like winter at all. As a matter of fact, some of these low temperatures are going to be above what we normally get for a high. The normal high is around 50, and we're going to be well above that. By morning, about 55 or so, maybe a sprinkle or two, but not much. And even for the overnight, we may see a sprinkle. And then just uh, cloudy skies generally to mostly cloudy. Could be a few breaks here and there, and about 62 or so coming up at around three o'clock at the uh, bus stop for the kids. You can see uh, the clouds have been moving on by. There have been a few holes in the clouds here and there, but generally we're gonna see more clouds, uh, probably cloudy to at times partly cloudy skies for tomorrow. Most of the showers are off to the north, snow flying over parts of Minnesota. Snow's flying out into the Great Plains, but they're very concerned out in Kansas and Oklahoma because what they're gonna see is a huge ice storm, looks like now coming up for this weekend. It's gonna be bad news for travelers out in the Great Plains. Winds out of the southwest at six and temperatures 54 in Dalton, 58 right now in the city, 60 in Cleveland, 56 Athens and already down to 49 in Murphy and 61 in Fort Payne. Now our high today was 61, 50 was the overnight low. Now a tenth of an inch of rain fell at the airport after midnight, before midnight, you had everything up and we had about a quarter of an inch of rain. But south of the city, there wasn't that much rain, except into the Blue Ridge where two tenths fell in Fort Mountain, three tenths in Blue Ridge, LJ about a tenth, Dalton had about a tenth, and then we had about six tenths in Red Bank, a half inch Signal Mountain, Lakeside, four tenths, Saudi Daisy and Dunlap, about three tenths out near Cleveland, and also in North Chattanooga, and about two tenths in Lookout Mountain, East Ridge, and Ringgold, while two tenths fell in Jasper and Colmont, half inch up into Pikeville, a ten mile head, about four tenths, while Athens and Etowah, just a tenth, and Turtletown and Murphy, about two tenths of an inch of rain. So it adds up and it helps a little bit. Uh, there wasn't a big rain, we didn't expect a big rain. Now we may see a few sprinkles for tomorrow. Most of them will probably be north and west of the city, right along this cold front, but this cold front is gonna stall right across the Tennessee Valley. So there's a little bit of green showing up here. Very light rain again, right into Friday morning. Very small chance, I'm giving it about a 10% chance. With this stalled cold front, the cold air is gonna settle in north of us. The warm air is gonna stay south of us. But see these arrows coming up into Texas? Watch what happens here out into Texas, because this is going to be pretty interesting. See all that pink that's starting to form out there? That's sleet, not sleet, that's freezing rain. A freezing rain storm, an ice storm is going to occur just north of Oklahoma City out in Kansas. It's going to be huge out there. It could be a major, major problem. And uh, if the computer models are right on this, it's going to be one of the biggest ones I've seen in a long time. For us, just a few sprinkles. The computer model is the same, Vipercast is the same, one to two inches of ice. And that's enormous. Usually you maybe get a quarter to a half inch for a real bad storm, but it could be a lot worse for them. So it's going to be an interesting story over the weekend. Uh, for us, though, maybe two to three tenths of an inch of rain coming up all the way into Sunday afternoon. And that's going to be off and on, very light stuff. Whitwell, 66 with lots of clouds uh, for tomorrow, while Scottsboro, you'll be near 67 for that high with lots of clouds. Tonight, generally cloudy and 53 for tomorrow, 67. Maybe a sprinkle, but a small chance. Southerly winds, and tomorrow night, 54, still way above normal. Cloudy skies. Seven-day forecast, 
67 again on Friday with only about a 20% chance for light shower. Saturday and Sunday I think look dry, but very warm, 66 to 67 degrees. If we get any breaks in the clouds at all, we'll get into the 70s. The next chance for rain of any meaning will be coming up next Wednesday with some pretty good thunderstorms popping up with highs still in the mid-60s. For the next seven days, 60s, that's something. Yeah, it really is. Paul, thank you. Okay. Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam has proclaimed tomorrow as FAFSA Frenzy Day. High school seniors and college students are encouraged to submit their free application for federal student aid to be eligible for the Hope Lottery Scholarship and Tennessee Promise Scholarship. Tennessee Promise provides high school graduates two free years of community or technical college. In order to remain eligible for Tennessee Promise, students must submit their FAFSA by next Tuesday, January 17th. So you have been warned. After the break at 11, unprecedented moments in Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions' confirmation hearing today. A colleague testifying against another colleague. The full story ahead. Plus, floodwater rescues continue out west on the coast after a drought-busting series of storms. We'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Leslie Dale at the TFP, and on a rainy kind of day, we're trying to bring you some sunshine. We have the Bonnaroo lineup on our Facebook page and timestreetpress.com. The Tivoli, if you pick up one of these, is bringing Dirty Dancing, Funny Man, Ron White, and much more coming at you for hopefully a brighter weekend. timestreetpress.com. The West is suffering yet another crippling punch delivered by a record-breaking storm system triggering major flooding and shutting down highways. Have a look at this video from Central California where crews have already rescued several dozen people and animals from rising floodwaters. Heavy rains have pounded the area since the start of the year. Many homes and cars have flooded in San Benito County. Residents there have been rushing to move their horses and cattle to higher ground. And in Pinol, California, floodwaters and mudslides washed away this road. The Department of Public Works says roads near this area are closed indefinitely. Officials say the combination of heavy rain, overflowing creeks, blocked drainage inlets, and broken levees caused the flooding. From one side of the country to the other, it was a very busy day in Washington that also included day two of the confirmation hearing for Attorney General nominee Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. And there was no less drama in this fight as African American members of Congress spoke out today against the nomination. NBC's Justice Correspondent Pete Williams has details. 
Senator Cory Booker, Democrat of New Jersey, became the first ever to testify against a colleague's nomination. I want an attorney general who is committed to supporting law enforcement and securing law and order, but that is not enough. Joining him, Congressman John Lewis of Georgia, who survived police beatings and civil rights marches. It doesn't matter how Senator Session may smile, how friendly he may be, how he may speak to you. But we need someone who's going to stand up, speak up, and speak out for the people that need help. A former Republican Attorney General, Michael Mukasey, praised Session, so did the President of the Fraternal Order of Police, and two men who worked with him when he was U.S. Attorney in Alabama. But the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus said putting the all-black panel at the end was a snub. To have a senator, a House member, and a living civil rights legend testify at the end of all of this is the equivalent of being made to go to the back of the bus. Still, Sessions appeared headed for confirmation with a Senate vote likely early next month. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. When we come back, a truck driver makes the mistake of looking at his cell phone seconds before he flipped off an interstate overpass, but it's all caught on camera. Plus, a Michigan man was badly hurt when he fell in the snow, but doctors say he's alive and recovering thanks to this guy, his dog, who never left his side. The heartwarming details are next. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11 in HD. The driver of an 18-wheeler was looking down at his cell phone when his tractor trailer went tumbling off an interstate. The whole thing was caught on camera. Hang on. Video inside the truck shows the driver on his phone while driving on I-75 in Florida. A car pulled out in front of him. He took evasive action as the car hit the brakes but he ended up losing control. The big rig hurtled over the guardrail, crashed onto the road below. Investigators say it's a miracle the truck driver survived. A drone crashed into Seattle's famed Space Needle just before the new year. Take a look at this. Officials say the drone crashed near some pyrotechnicians who were preparing for the annual New Year's Eve fireworks display. Whoa. This was the third time a drone has been recovered at the Space Needle. Seattle police now have the drone. 
and the incident was reported to the FAA. A northern Michigan man was saved by the heroic actions of his dog after he slipped and fell in the snow. This happened New Year's Eve at his home in Emmett County. The man went outside to get some firewood, slipped and fell. Hospital officials say they laid there paralyzed for the next 20 hours. They also say his dog was by his side the entire time, licking his face and hands, and lying on top of him to keep warm. I don't think he would be living unless the dog were there. The dog kept him warm. The dog kept him, his extremities warm. He didn't have any frostbite. And it was 24 degrees that night. When the man lost his voice screaming for help, his dog kept barking. That's how neighbors finally discovered him and had him taken to the hospital. He suffered two herniated discs, but he's on the road to recovery thanks to his furry friend. We could all hope for a dog like that. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Coming up next in sports, the balls slip up again at home. And the box erase a slow start to win a third straight. Paul Shaheen and Jill Jelman break it down for you in sports next. What's the difference between a pretty win and an ugly win? Last year's 45-point win over the Citadel and tonight's win over the Citadel. Pretty and ugly. But the reality is there's no difference. A win is a win. And the mocks were out to take it no matter how it came with the Citadel. Here's what I mean by ugly. They leave the paint completely open. Easy jam for Ezekiel Bolligan, who, by the way, graduated from Hamilton Heights in Chattanooga. Still early on, Tom Koopman left all alone easy. Look from three. Chattanooga trailed by seven, just eight minutes in. The mocks snap out of it, though. Mikhail Foreman ties it up at 24 with a triple. Under four to the half, Nat Dixon with easily the pass of the game. Behind the back to Trey McLean burying the three. Take another look at this pass. UTC up 46-38 at the break. Second half action, JBC. Jonathan Burrows, Cook driving a game-high 20 points for Cook. Under 10 to play, Justin Toyo about to take over. Toyo sending projectiles into the stands. And then on offense, the oop from JBC crushed. 73-59, Toyo not done. Six foot 11 with breakaway speed. Get it? Got it. Toyo had 17, the mocks by 10, 83-73, your final score. Channel 3's Jill Jelnick joins us live now in the studio with post-game reaction. Jill, the mocks again erase an ugly start to walk away on top. 
They sure did, Paul, and head coach Matt McCall made sure to address that rough start after the game. As the team expected, the Citadel threw everything at them tonight. Man-to-man -to -man press, zone press, half-court man, you name it. And while coach was pleased with the way they adjusted throughout the night, he felt that the Mocs came in with a more casual approach that the Bulldogs then took advantage of. You know, when you play against them, and I burned a timeout there, I was a little bit frustrated, you can't play casual. When you get loose with the basketball or you play casual, they pounce on you, and that's how they play. The one thing I was really, really proud of our team for, though, is you know we held them in the 70s. They're averaging 99 points a game. Outside of those last you know four baskets there, they were in the 60s. You know they scored a couple baskets late, and if you do that against the Citadel, that that is an accomplishment. We pride ourselves on defense, and so we just try to go out, go out there and guard. They got great shooters. Everybody thinks can shoot threes. And so we just know we got to take that away from them. Uh, I feel like we did, we, had to, we did that to the extent tonight. And speaking of that defense, Chattanooga limited the Bulldogs to just eight three-pointers tonight, which was nearly five less than their 12.7 per game average. Next up, the Mocs will travel, travel to Mercer this Saturday, 2 p.m. tip-off. Live in the studio, Jill Jelnick, Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports. Thanks, Jill. We know it'll be live in Macon, Georgia. In Knoxville, Rick Barnes said he gave Dietrich Mostella multiple chances to get it together before dismissing him. He didn't give specifics, but today we learned those multiple incidents were involving marijuana. That's 10 points a game now missing. 10 points that would have come in handy against South Carolina today. No one really scoring for the first nine minutes. It was tied 6-6, six to six, but the Gamecocks catch fire. P.J. Dozier. Jumping in for three. It was 13-7 South Carolina. USC continues streaking. Sindarius Thornwell, the steal, the flush. The Gamecocks in the middle of a 21-6 first half run. The Vols would claw back before the half. It's Jordan Bone in transition. UT down six at the break, but they could not get over the hump in the second half. The Vols go down by 10, thanks much in part to Thornton. 70-60, your final score. As mentioned, 10 points missing. Jacob Houston made up his mind when he graduated UTC, a two-time All-American quarterback. He didn't care what position, what team, what league he wanted to keep playing. From the CFL to now the NFL, he hasn't changed his mindset and it's paying off. The New York Giants have signed Houston as a running back to their future reserve roster, which means he will remain a Giants and be on the team's official 90-man roster when camp starts in April. Jacob signed with the Giants practice squad just before the new year. Meanwhile, another mock is about to chase that same dream. Red Bank native, All-American defensive end Keontae Davis has officially accepted his invite to the NFL Combine in late February. Davis is also playing in the, this month's Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama on the 28th. Exciting news at the end of the season. For Absolutely that. is. That's it for sports. Paul Bears has your seven-day forecast when we get back.
We've got a very mild night tonight, maybe a sprinkle or two, and possibly a sprinkle in the morning when you wake up with temperatures <laughs> about 54 or so. Getting into the 60s for tomorrow, very small chance for any type of sprinkle again. Anything more than a couple hundredths of an inch would be surprising. And slight chance on Friday was 67, and then 60s right into the weekend. Next best chance for meaningful rain will be a week from today. Paul, thank you. Okay. It may have been a little chilly for people out on the Gulf beaches in Texas this morning. Some sea turtles probably agree with them. You know, they were stunned by the recent cold weather and rescued. Then today, released back into the Gulf at the Padre Island National Seashore. They've been getting some TLC from the park staff the past several days during their rehabilitation. Representatives from the National Park Service showed them off to beachgoers before putting them back in the cold, cold ocean. I love that for service. <laughs> They're waving at everybody, right? Yeah. Let me are they go. waving or are they saying, put me down? Yeah, uh, that's right. Bring me back to the... smell the ocean, right? Yeah. Aw. Okay. Could that guy walk any slower? Right? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do for Eyewitness News on 11. Have a great night.